Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another Giant 4 video. Today is part two of my Photon Dose Sim code walkthrough. So Photon Dose Sim is a Giant 4 application I developed. Basically, it just shoots a bunch of photons into one detector and it prints out the dose in grays of how much the detector received. In the last video, I showed you guys visually how the code is set up, like how the classes all relate to each other visually using like a little picture. But in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go show you guys each C++ file that I wrote and show you that way how it's all connected and how it works, kind of the nitty gritty of the code. Perfect. So now we're in Visual Studio. On the right, we have all our project files, right? So here's our uh, photondosim.cc. That's our main file. And then in the include directory, you have all the header files. And in our SRC directory or source, we have all the C++ files. So let's go ahead and start with the main file. All right, so up here we have all the included headers from Giant4 and from my own that I created over here. All right, guys, so this first little block of code, what does it do? Basically, what it does is decides if we're going to use a UI or not. So if you can see here, defines the UI object as a null pointer, right? And then if the arg count is equal to one, it will create a new UI. If the arg count is two or more, it won't create a UI. Now let's skip all the way to the bottom. And this uh, block right here, um, if the first one, if there's not a UI, it will execute the second argument, okay? Which is gonna be a Mac file. But if there is a UI, it just executes the init bizmac and starts a UI session. So that's very confusing, I know, but let me kind of show it to you guys in real time. All right, guys, so here I am in the main folder of my application. So I'm going to go over to build, go to release, and here's the executable file, right? And so if I double click on it, it will, you know, pop up the UI and everything. Um, there's another way to do it. If I right click and open this directory in the terminal. So this is the directory where our executable file is. If I press period backslash and then photon dose sim, press enter. It's the same thing as double clicking it. It just displays the UI. It just starts the application, right? So that would be kind of behind the scenes, um, what I just did was one argument. Photon, those, sit. That's one argument. So that's why over here in the code, it's going to um, create a UI object up at the top. And then down at the bottom, it's going to start everything. If I want it to run a little faster, I can do two arguments. So if my arg count is greater than one, it's not going to start a UI. It's just going to do it all in the terminal window. So go down here and basically the second argument, arg v, that means arg value number one, which is number two, <laughs> if you guys know programming a little bit, uh, it's going to apply this command, control execute and whatever that file name is. So let me show you what that means. I'm here in terminal, right? This is my first argument. My second argument, I'm going to do test run.mac. This file, it you know, uh, runs the test run that I showed you. So if I press enter, it should just run it all in the terminal window and not in the UI. So let's press enter. As you can see, that went considerably faster than having all the visualization slowing it down. And we still get the same information. We still get how much dose happened. All right, so moving on with the code, this next little block, uh, creates a run manager. And then this block right here creates a scoring manager on the UI. So that's not important for my project. I didn't end up using it, but all it does is over here on the left side, it adds all these score commands. Score means how many particles hit the detector. Every time a particle hits, you can like register that using a score. But I didn't end up using it because I found a better way to keep track of of score. All right, so now we have our three initial initialization classes that 
you need for the run manager. So first of all, detector construction. And over here on the right, you'll see I created a detector construction class. Then there's the physics list. And I'm using the QBBC, which is already provided by GNT4. And then down here, we have the action initialization, which does the primary generator action, the stepping action, event action, all that stuff I talked about. Okay, moving on past that, we have the visualization. So I created a new biz manager, which what that does, what this line right here does, is it creates all these viz, where's this, there. Viz, all these commands are now available for us to use because we have a viz manager. Then we just have to initialize all the geometry, create a UI manager. Then we do this run um, either with the UI or without the UI. And then finally, we have to clean up some of the some of the dynamically allocated memory that we used by deleting viz manager and run manager. All right, guys, I know this video is already getting pretty long, but I'm going to quickly go over just uh, some of these classes, and then I'm going to show you the Mac files. So first of all, just action initialization. Um, there's two things you have to, there's two methods you have to override from the base class. Like if you look up here, this is the base class that we're including, and we have to, you know, override a couple. Uh, build for master, that is for using multi-threaded mode, which means it can work a lot faster. It does a lot of things at once. I wasn't really able to understand that in my short time on this project. So I want to look more into this and learn because I want it to go really fast. But build is more sequential. So it'll do one thing after another, right? So we start by doing the primary generator action. Then we put the run action in. Then we do event action and then stepping action. So kind of sequentially giving these things back to the action initialization and it just initializes all these actions so that GNT4 can use them. All right, guys, so here we are in the detector construction class. This is the next thing we're gonna look at. Um, so basically what this does is it just can, uh, you know, initializes all the detectors, all the geometry that's in the scene. So first thing we need to do is, well, we want a NIST material manager. So NIST is like this database with lots of materials that we can use. Um, so we want that so we can have our detectors be made of some type of material. Okay, so first we define a world. So we're gonna have a world made of air. It's gonna be this big, pretty small, 50 centimeters uh, cubed. And then we have to define three types of worlds. We have to do solid world, which is like the physical aspect, logic world. So GM4 just works like this. You need like the solid version and the logical version. And then we make a phys world, like a physical world, which kind of combines everything together. Skip that, commented out stuff. And then we just have one detector that's made out of water. And we kind of initialize the size and what it's made out of. And then we make a solid detector and logic detector. Then at the bottom, we want the scoring volume. So this is the material that keeps track of the scores, like how many particles hit it, it's going to keep track of that. So we do that by making F scoring volume into the detector. And we want to put in the logical version, not the solid or anything else. So this line just makes sure that our detector is the thing that registers all the particles. Real quickly, moving on to the primary generator action. Basically, this is our particle gun, right? So we're, for each event, we're only doing one particle. In the future, I'm going to change this to like 100 or 1,000 because in reality, just one photon. Like you don't need to keep track of each one. But basically what it is, it's a gamma ray particle. And here's the energy of it, 6 MeV. Then down here at the generate primaries uh, block, basically this function is called at the beginning of each event. So really what I did here was kind of just the gun placement. I wanted that to change each each particle. So each particle I wanted to be slightly randomized so they're not all coming from the same exact spot. All right, so for the event action class, like I said, this each event is one particle uh, getting shot off. And all it's doing here is at the beginning of the event, it's saying that there's no energy 
deposited in that step. But then at the end, um, they get the energy and they add it to the total energy. All right, in the run action class, this is kind of defining the whole run. Define our units. We register a accumulable, which is going to keep track of all of our events. So each one event gets added to the accumulable, and that's how at the end it shows you the total dose that was given. And then at the end of each run, what's going to do is put all the events together, all the dose, calculate it. And then down here, it displays on the, on the command line all this information, how many events were in the run, um, how much dose ended up in the detector. All right, guys. And finally, the last class is our stepping action class. So all this class really does is it keeps track of all the little steps in the particle's journey. If one of the steps ended up inside the detector, then we want to register that step um, and tell the tell the event action to record a little bit of dose into that uh, detector. So moving on from all that C++ code, um, we're going to look at the Mac files that I've created. So what these do, they just have, like I said, a bunch of commands um, to do in order. And the run will take these commands and do them. And that's how, you know, things happen. So here in the init viz Mac, um, everything is really commented out. Uh, but the only things that you have to realize are run initialize. That starts the run. And then basically it executes vizmac. So let's go back to vizmac. All right, vizmac, what it does, it creates an OpenGL viewer. That's the only kind that this example supports for now, but you use a different uh, visualization driver and add that in here. It's gonna draw the geometry, then it, it sets the view angle. So that's why you get kind of that uh, nice corner angle. Because if you don't have that, it's going to show it like this. We set a little bit of style. We have we want it to be wireframe. And then down here is for the particle trajectories. So this is going to draw out when the particles get shot. It draws that green line following them. At the end of each run, it's going to have all the particle paths together superimposed. So you can kind of see the total what happened. And then the last line is basically the world that I created um, and make sure you're, you can't see it. So if this wasn't there, you just see it box around everything. I didn't like that. So I just said, make the world invisible. And then lastly, our test run Mac file, basically it just initializes the run again. Um, everything you don't really need. I was really messing around trying to figure out how to make scoring work. But at the end, all you need to do is just run beam on 100. What that does is just shoots the part, shoots 100 particles at the, at the detector, and that's all you need, really. Finally, the last file to worry about is our cmakelists.txt file. What this does is it's all the settings for the compiled example. So however you want the executable file to show up, um, you can control that here in cmakelists. So I encourage you all to look over this on your own. Uh, the one thing that I wanted to point out is for these Mac files to actually work, you need to put them in the right directory. You need them in the same directory as the example is. So look here, we have our example and then all our Mac files. So to do this, I just uh, put this little block of code in here. I said, configure the source files. Um, all of the files in the Mac files folder, which you can see I put all the Mac files in there. Um, you're going to put them in the release folder. That way, once you run my example, it won't give you an error. It will actually be able to run those Mac files. Okay, guys, that's all I got for you today. Thank you for watching my video about Photon Dose Sim. This was really fun project to work on. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care. See you later.